the most important part of your database is a table. The, the table settings are very important because all the other entities like forms, queries, reports inherit the settings that you have for each field in your table. So it's important that you spend time on that setting. So I would not recommend that you go to click to add and start a new field from there. I would not even recommend that you create a table here, but always go to table design. Why? Let me show you what the power is of design. Um, I have only one record in here. This number tells you that I deleted 12 records already. I'm going to add a new one. Notice that the new number kicks in automatically. That gives you an idea how many records you have and how many you have deleted. Then when I go here I can either type the name of a department or I can do the drop down button, alt arrow down, alphabetical list and I can click on one of those or I can arrow down and tab. The next one just automatically capitalizes things. So I type a lowercase m and it automatically capitalizes. I cannot type more because the field is already set to 1. The same story with state. You can either try a, a listing like we did before with departments or you just type the state you want. It says I need two characters when you start typing. If you forget the second one it will not accept it. If you type too much, it will not let you. Then you have a drop down box again, alt arrow down to get a consistent setting there. By default I put already in there 40 hours, most people work 40 hours per week. If you don't want that, you can set it to whatever they want, let's say 32, but the machine does not accept that. It says it has to be one of those numbers that we showed. Then social security number, you can skip it, but if you start typing there, you have to make sure that the formatting is correct. We don't want users to type the dashes and they could make mistakes, so I'm just typing one, two, and the machine automatically kicks in with the dashes. And if I forget a number and I go to the next one, it will say, sorry, I cannot do that. You cannot type more, so at least the format is correct. Same story with phone numbers. Then for the date of hire, I put by default today's date in there already. That's when I made this video. Um, you can still change that, of course. The formatting is regulated, and then finally the hourly rate is by default 11 and again you could set some validation rules there. As I said already it is important that you go to the table design. So you either do that by home view design or you go in the right lower corner and click on the design button. This is the design behind this table and I recommend that you do that yourself. You usually want to start with an ID field, number one. Try to make it an auto number so it automatically numbers everything. And once you do that, you will see that it chooses the field size long integer. Please don't touch that. It increments. Uh, Indexed, yes, no duplicates, so you can never have identical ID numbers. The next one is a short text. By default it makes that 255. I would recommend that you shorten that. The rest I will skip. The next one, first name, a similar story. Make the field size a little shorter all you need. Then we have a department ID. That is a number that refers to the departments table here. The departments ID in the departments table is also an auto number, but not here. Here it has to be a regular number. But of the long integer type, because an auto number is always long integer. In this case you want it also to be indexed, 
But duplicates are okay. Many people can be in the same department. I will get back to this one later on. Gender, we did a little more there. Short text, one character, and then I did formatting and input mask. Format mm, sh regulates how it's going to show up. An input mask regulates what happens when you type. While you are typing, it puts dashes in, parentheses, etc. What, what do these codes stand for? I'm going to show you how you can find out. You go to the help information, type input mask, and then you get a list of entries. I'm going to take the first one and maximize that screen, and you will see you get beautiful information there, especially this list is very important. It regulates whether you must enter something or you can enter something. A zero says you must enter a digit, a nine says this. A question mark, you can enter, you can enter a letter. That's an important one. Capital L, the user must enter a letter. And here is the one that we just discussed. Converts all characters that follow to uppercase. So that's what we did here. I said the format capitalize everything that you type. The input mask is capitalize one optional character, question mark. I also implemented a validation rule. It has to be an F or an M. You don't want errors in your database. And if the user does that wrong, give them a validation text that tells them what they did wrong. A similar story for state. We want two characters in the United States. Format is capitalize everything. Input mask is capitalize and then two characters, LL, that are required. I enter the validation rule, validation text, and that's it. Then we did the title of these people. Here I did a little more. Not only did I also enter an input mask, capitalize the first required character, and then lowercase, the second one, and the third and the fourth one are optional. Because Mr. and Mrs. have different length. Okay. I, I did a little more there. I also made a lookup list. You can do that by going to the lookup wizard. And that says, do you want to look something up or will you type the values? When you say, I type the values, then it will do this. And you type in there all your titles. You could have done that for states also, of course. I'm canceling this. W what happened when you did that? You also got a look up section. A combo box, a value list with these entries, and you can still change them by hand. For ours, we definitely want a number. An integer. Not a long integer, that is 2.1 billion. Decimal places is automatic. Input mask, a required number first, and the second one is optional. By default I put 40 in there, and then a limitation by valid validating things with a validation text if they violate the validation. Social security number. Nine field size. Short text. The input mask is a little more complicated. Zero means required numbers. Once you start typing in there, it says you must finish all these zeros. Uh, the backslash says the next character, the dash, is literal. Next, literal. You probably want to make sure that you don't have duplicate numbers, so make it indexed. No, go to the drop-down box there and say yes. No duplicates. That gives you a little bit overhead cost because it has to check all the numbers but it might be worth it. Phone number, a similar story. This time the input mask looks a little more complicated, but the beginning is the same. And then we have two literal characters, so I put them in double quotes. I could have done backslash, closing parenthesis, backslash, dash. That would be okay too. The date of hire is a date time entry. You can regulate the format completely. 1M means 
1 for January, 2 M's will be 0, 1 for January, 3 M's will be J, A, N for January. Same story for D and for Y. Input mask, I did forward slashes, but you can use dashes if you want that, but then you have to do it in the formatting too. Default value today's date. Date is the function, open close parentheses, we are in Microsoft here, so you need equals date. Validation rule, we cannot have hires in the future, so you cannot type a date far ahead by mistake or on purpose. Uh, if you want also a margin of data entry, if you say it is also okay to put in the date of hire for next week or next month, then you can say plus 7 or plus 31, whatever you want. I'm not doing that. The hourly rate, currency, you want probably a default value in there, so people cannot type by mistake 111 instead of 11 and a validation rule. All of this is fine now. When I flip to the other side, you must save the table first, and now I can enter all my new records, and they will listen to all those rules that I showed you. The only thing we haven't done yet is the department ID. Why not? Because you have to make sure you have a department table. I made something like this. This department ID is the primary key here. So first of all we have to connect it to the employees table. Database tools, relationships, I had connected it already. You connect the primary key to a foreign key. I'm, I'm going to delete that connection to show you how you would do it. So you click on the one side on the primary key, click and hold and drag it to the foreign key and drop it there. Enforce referential integrity, that means you can never type a number here that does not exist there. Create it. Now we have the right connection. I go back to my employees table to implement the department ID field. Before I do that, you want to make sure that your employee ID here is the primary key. How do you do that? By right clicking in front of it and say I want that to be the primary key. Or you click on that button. Okay. Now the department ID. You probably want to use a lookup wizard. Once you do that, you get this lookup section here that we discussed before, but for another field. It's a combo box. This time not of a value list, but a table or query, and it created this SQL statement. You did that with your lookup wizard. I'm going to click on the three dots there. This is what it did. It created a simple query or SQL statement based on the department ID and the department itself. Okay. Make sure that you want them in an alphabetical order by setting this to ascending. You may have to do that manually. So that's what we got here. The bound column is one. It really stores the ID number, but it has two columns, ID and the name of the department. But the first field is invisible. It's hidden. Zero inches, semicolon, and one inch for the second one. Uh, by default it shows 8 rows unless you want to show more. I think once you know that you will be able, you go back, to enter any kind of department ID there. I wish you good luck with Access. Access is a very powerful tool. It's very good for databases, much better than Excel. Excel is easier to understand. Access is more complicated.